speakers you will feel that they are hunting dogs and with a chasing line hard work hard work 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 work, work. <laughs> and you know they think that they can change all crazy not like me <laughs> impossible because we are very much relaxed and flirting with happy lucky gold friends but these human hunters are having junk of terminologies, torture sense of terminologies, like mind-boggling vision, perfectionism, puritanism, and fire work. Work, 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 work. All the day long they are yelling, you do this, you will become that. Just to change from this to that, oh no. They are making our lives horrible. <laughs> A million dollar question. Why should we remain lazy? To know the answers, you need to check the mystery of history. I need to peep the record of scientists. To me, they were all crazy cousins. Yeah. Look what Newton did. Uh, what he did? He simply ignored the given work by his kafil. Oh yes. His kafil said many times, Yeah, he do your job. Do your job. But his mukhmafi was sleeping under the apple tree in eight working hours. So what happened? One day, the apple fell on his tip of his nose and this lazy Newton, wake up and clean his sneaky nose and give the law of gravity. Even this poor apple is fully informed about laws of gravity. And if, if this Newton would have worked outside the garden, outside the tree, in a scorching sunlight, as for his kafil, he won't do this job comfortably. So, moral of the story is, yeah, need to sleep eight working hours under the sea. Someday, 
either apple or someone teach the drums gravity to us. Look, another example, another historic proof, another crazy scientist, Archimedes, was taking bath after a long, long time, time like me. While he was bathing, and he found some kind of insight, he gave a Eureka movement to that one. And after getting that one, he ran to the king's court without clothes. And king awarded him. So nobody knows why he awarded him. So the important point, point to be noted, he was in a relaxed mood. And he was not in a wild ocean with fighting with tides and storms and thunder. So again, this was a blessing of comfort and relax. Dear fellow Toastmaster, we cannot deny the charm of illiteracy. Huh? Look, in our great countries, still people are taking the treatment of loose motion with quacks and illiterate peers. So enjoy the conventional death instead of neutralize ultra modern death. To protect these toiling masses, I'll give you another example, another historical proof, historical blunder. What we have learned that Columbus discovered uh, it's a false and wrong claim. He missed his route due to water current. He was going to India and ship, but he missed the route and gone to the America mistakenly. Yes, it is his mistake. But again, the reason was why he going to India, he was sleeping in the ship. The moral of the story is the discovery of America is a blessing of sleeping. <laughs> I have sharing doubt. While sharing doubt, I feel the world casted a doubt on me. Because if I'm right, then why God Almighty is not <coughs> easy? And every moment he is expanding and growing this universe. If I am true, then why our loving mothers toil and endeavor so much to protect our lives with their sword's hands? If I am right, then the human heroes who protect our freedom like Martin Luther and Mahatma Gandhi were they fake or fraud? No, no, they were not. That means my group, my lovely lazy groups, are the brand ambassador of evil or devil. If so, my mission statement should be changed. Instead of boom boom laziness, turn down laziness, turn with laziness. First I would request the audience to be silent for one minute. Timer, please note down this one minute and inform me. Those must to name Javed. Contestant number three, Toastmaster Matthew Skurian. The title of his speech is Make Mistakes. The title of his speech is Make Mistakes. Toastmaster Matthew Skurian. Contestant number three. Make 
mistakes, Toastmasters. Make mistakes, my friends. Mr. Khrushchev, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guests. I strongly advocate you make mistakes. You must be thinking this man has grown too old and he has lost his sense of everything, isn't it? No, I believe that we should make mistakes. Why should we make mistakes? I will narrate you a small actual incident which happened not that long ago, when I was about 30 years old, when I started my career with international trains. We had a British director for the company. <coughs> he came out to our department. It was a huge hall where we had separators for each department. He came to our department and he said, why don't you people learn from Gopi? And we were stunned because Gopi was the only good for nothing, so called good for nothing employee of the company. He can never do anything. We never gave any important assignment to him. He was always left in the corner. The director added, he never made mistakes because he never does anything. <laughs> so, if we are not to make mistakes, we are never to do anything. And another friend of mine, who has married twice, and both the wives are alive, he once said a humorous statement. My first wife and I we are living happily for 25 years <coughs> until we got married. I went to him, I said, if you thought that it was a mistake to marry once, why did you marry again? He said, no, that was not a mistake. The first mistake was I married a lady who was not right. Then what about the second one? <coughs> he said, then I realized it is a mistake again because I married another lady. Oh, if that is the case, we should keep on doing mistakes? I think we should. My previous speaker, Nayan Javed, told about Columbus making a mistake. Had he not done that mistake, probably America would not have been ever dis been discovered. Thomas Alva Edison, if he had not repeated those mistakes 999 times, we would not have lives. I would have been holding a handle now, a candle now. Mahatma Gandhi was ridiculed as a foolish person doing the mistake of fighting against the empire. I would have been a slave even now if he had done that mistake of fighting the empire. Martin Luther King, when he believed that the white and the black should be treated in the same manner, Many people laughed at him of doing that mistake of treating the whites and the blacks alike. America would not have been the America it is today. Nelson Mandela did the mistake of fighting the powerful, believing that apartheid has to be removed. Had he not done the mistake of staying in the prison for 27 years, South Africa would still be a country of apartheid. Now, you might ask, Matthew Skurian, you have given us lofty ideas, wonderful names. We have heard it so many times. What is new? Can we make a difference? Can we make mistakes? I think we can. My father was a very ordinary man. When I was about 10 years old, my uncle brought my cousin to our place for school holidays. And my uncle had brought a bunch of books with him for his son to do his transcription every day, Hindi, Malayalam, and English. Read general knowledge books. And he gave it to my father and he said, please make sure that he writes one page each every day, reads the newspaper, 
and reports to you about the news every day. My father said, if he is left here, he will enjoy with my children. That's what he should be doing at this age. You are doing a terrible mistake, my uncle said. And I hated that man for coming over just before the holidays. I knew he might have screwed the holidays. No, my father was willing to take that mistake and do that mistake of allowing his children to enjoy. After about 45 years, friends, my father, when he was on his deathbed, this cousin came and visited him. When he came out of his father's, my father's hospital bed, he whispered in my ears, Matthews, I wished I had a father like yours. A couple of years back, I visited my uncle, who was in his deathbed, who has got four professional, highly successful children. And he, about two days before he departed this world, told me, Matthews, I wished I had children like you. Do those mistakes which you think are right. The people around might ridicule you. They might call you fools. They might say you are a failure. Try it, fellow Toastmasters. Try, my friends. Venture to do those mistakes. Who knows? You might be a hero. Please kindly have silence for one minute. Timer, please. Let me. Contestant number four, Toastmaster M.S. Heather. The title of his speech is, Yes, You Can. Yes, You Will. The title of his speech is, Yes, You Can. Yes, You Will. Toastmaster M.S. Heather, contestant number four. Isn't this life a wonderful gift given by the God? But how do we exactly lead our lives? By making mistakes and being lazy. Isn't it Toastmasters? We determine and we are responsible for the ups and downs of our own lives. Contest chair, respected judges, Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, good evening and assalamu alaikum. Good evening. We make our own lives. We are responsible not only for us, at least for the loved ones, if we really wish to do so. But what exactly happens in the life is what we exactly control. Let me tell you a true story. A happy family of three. A father working abroad. A mother, secondary grade teacher. And their first lovely son. The son was charming and lovely as he baffled his parents and neighbors 
and his curiosity and skills. He has learned all the milestones within the young age and was admired by everyone around him. One fine morning, the terrible thing happened. He was ill with a sort of certain virus fever, but was wrongly administered a mixture of penicillin injection. Everything was calm till the early hours of the morning, and his mother finally felt that boy was shaking, which he had conversion during sleep, which was very dangerous. They prayed like any other mother. They went all the way to the holy shrines to do away the black magic. And their simplicity in life, they were not that much rich, brought the father back from abroad and took a local position. And every one of the relatives advised, the God has given simple people, the great people for the great parents. So they must be capable of adapting them and keeping them in a mind so they can lead a good life. Someone else advised, please put him in a home and have a beautiful life, comfortable life. But the parents sat down and had a long discussion. They throw away the comfortable life and looked into the eyes of their son, then promised them to make and remodel his life like every other child. The mother resigned from the seniority of the job. She stood by him, provided unyielded grace, passion, and great attention to the child. The child was managing understandably and finally he became one of the best guy in the town but still he was unable to walk due to neuropathic conditions. The things were developing. The sizes were reoccurring heavily. So the mother started to give some alternative medicines, even teaching him yoga. And she was learning some courses of dyslexia in order to keep the child so happy and healthy. The father took him to the swimming school and finally he taught him how to be independently <coughs> active. The boy understood all of the remarkings about the parents. He gracefully exalted all the hurdles and finally became the most successful person in the school, in the university, and even the gold medalist of the University of Madras. Dear Toastmasters, that the story of the child is none other than Toastmaster M.S. Haider, who is standing in front of me. My parents would have left me like others, then I could have been wondering as a disabled person, if they really thought of same like any other parents would do. My father lost the job, my mother lost the seniority, and they did not have the second child till I was 10 years old. It was not due to the laziness, it was a dedication they made. 
and if from that small family in the small village if i can do it i believe the certainly you will you can do it also to conclude my message dear toast masters please remember when you are amidst of such bad situations always think there is a light at the end of the dark tunnel and the ugly caterpillar struggling in its cocoon one day will become a beautiful butterfly yes you can and yes you will got you please be silent for one minute Contestant number five, Toastmaster Andy Rajan. The title of his speech is "Mother of All Invention." The title of his speech is "Mother of All Inventions." Toastmaster Andy Rajan, contestant number five. almost hear your brain creak what do you think is the greatest invention of all times anybody suggest computers computers anybody else mobile human being mobile iphone iphone you know something you are all right in all respects but allow me to submit my conviction of the mother of all inventions <coughs> it is Copying. Yes, I said copying, not cheating. Courtes chair, honourable judges, my fellow toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Good evening to all of you. Good evening. Good evening. To me, that fellow who invented the wheel, I wasn't impressed. But the person who invented the other three wheels. Ah, I was impressed with him. He put an idea to work. What are they doing here today? Look at yourselves. We say big things like learning the art of communications and leadership skills. But we actually copy. We see people. We see great toastmasters like Lancy, Satish Kini, other DTMs. We look at what they're doing and we try to do something better. We tweak it a little bit, we cover it a little bit, and we give projects and contest pitches. And in all fairness, I must tell you, I'm doing exactly that today. But I make sure that it is fully disguised and masked so that it appears original. Does it or not? It does, right? Absolutely. So far, so good. I'm glad. <laughs> is what has carried mankind from cave dwellings to stone age to iron age to bronze age and on to space age purely by being observant but copying what his predecessors did now history is rich with people people like eminent people like scientists einstein sir isaac newton and so on and so forth but believe me 
all of them took ideas from scriptures and writings from people before them. Those people essentially jumped onto these ideas, but their concepts were left jungled or half done. So there's no question of originality. Originality is a myth. What we brandish today in grand words like innovation, benchmarking, best practices. But in the confines of my room, I describe it with just two alphabets, B, S. So, what I would suggest is, let's copy if it makes you feel better. And we're always doing it with or without our knowledge, voluntary or involuntary. But the idea is to get better at the game. Just the other day, Toastmaster Irfan and Sadia Khan invited me to their home for dinner. I went there. And believe me, they had a spread. And the meal was so delicious, it teased my taste buds. I was, it was something exotic and absolutely satisfying. And then, at the end of the meal, I asked Sadia, you are gifted with such an art of cooking. She smiled, she said, thank you, thank you very much. But what she did not tell me was she is copying from her mother. <laughs> Which of course Irfan told me later. And he also said that's the reason you got married to her anyway. <laughs> now, some computer geeks or technocrats here might argue with me that, no, 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 Andy, you're not right. Because Steve Jobs, the guy who had headed Apple Incorporation, he had original ideas. He came up with state-of-the-art new stuff. Let me tell you guys. Steve Jobs took his ideas from a company called Xerox, where he worked before. And ironically, Xerox is actually a company fully involved in copying technology. <laughs> <laughs> So, what I'm trying to tell you today is nothing else. If there's any of you in here who feel belittled, or you cringe away because you have no original ideas, go forth and copy. <laughs> nothing to stop you. And the astounding truth is that nobody has original ideas. So, Having said all this, I must conclude by saying a little thing, which may contradict all my statements so far. Never, ever let your children copy in exams. Please keep silence for a minute. Next contestant is contestant number six, Toastmaster Ananda Ganesh. The title of his speech is My Dreams into Reality. The title of his speech is My Dreams. 
reality. Toastmaster Ananda Ganesh. Contestant number six. He is a man who strongly believes that communication is the key to success. He transformed his dreams into reality by converting a tiny garbage dump into a world-class city. He is my role model. Singapore First President Lee Kuan Yew, who has used the art of communication as the language of leadership. Contest Chair, Honorable Judges, Ladies and Gentlemen, Fellow Toastmasters, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Ten years ago in Singapore, on a Monday morning meeting, everyone was rushing to the video conferencing hall. My colleague, Archana, asked me, Anand, are you not coming for the meeting? I believe that you have a project speech today. My hands were shaking. I was nervous, tense. I felt butterfly in my stomach. I was trying to escape from the situation, but I could not. When I got to the podium, I was dizzy with nervousness. I stuttered and stammered in front of more than 50 colleagues who are waiting to hear something profound. I could not able to speak a single word. What an embarrassing situation. After the meeting, Archana asked me, Anand, what happened to you? You always look cool and jovial. Are you OK today? <laughs> I have no answer. The truth was, that was my first public speaking experience. I was scared. On that day, I decided to look for a course in public speaking. Then three years ago, in Riyadh hotel lobby, I was waiting to meet a hotel manager. I saw a huge crowd, a room nearby. I could hear the huge <coughs> I mean, sound of applauses and cheering. I was very curious to see the happenings inside. I just walked inside. I saw Toastmaster International Conference in session. Wow, what an inspirational speech. And one who talked about how to overcome the stage fear in the public speaking. I got it, what I was looking for. I got it. Back in Kobar, I started looking for the Toastmasters club. Many clubs are there. So my friend, Toastmaster Bala, he told me, go to Oasis. The leaders are there. Immediately I joined. Within a couple of two weeks, I started preparing my icebreaker speech. Even though I want to give up, but my mentor and my subconscious mind told me, Anand, you can do it. You must do it. I rehearsed many times. And finally, I got my best speaker award for my, for my icebreaker speech. I have failed many times and criticized many times, but this win is really, really motivated me in a higher level to move forward in my public speaking skills. Fellow Toastmasters, today most successful people and unsuccessful people, it's not how often they fail, it's how often they try. Most of the successful people, if you observe, they keep try again and again until to get what they, they, what they want. And they do different always. If you look at the most invention of all the time, Thomas Alva Edison, when he was trying to invent the light bulb, he failed more than a thousand times. If we could be there, we don't have really patience to wait for up to that time. 
maybe we try one or two times, we just quit it. But he never quit. He just keep try, try, try until you get his result. Edison gave us a great philosophy. He knows that human mind can capable to do it. If you want a real success, put your mind to it. Work hard enough, long enough, and if you are determined, you can succeed. I am using the Edison philosophy in my communication skills. Fellow Toastmasters, no one ever succeed at their first attempt. Do you agree? Yes. So, my story is no different. Today, I have shared my failure and my success with you. With this, I got a couple of experience. I would like to share with you a few steps that can change your failure into a successful formula. <coughs> Number one, dream big. Always have a big dream. Forget it whether you can achieve it or not, but have a big dream. Don't block your dreams. Second one, believe in yourself. <coughs> Say to your subconscious mind that you can do it. You can do it. And the third one, make mistakes. Like our DTM Matthew Prince said, make mistakes. Don't afraid to make mistakes. Make mistakes. Learn from it. And re-evaluate your situations. Try to know your strength and the weakness. And the last one, the fifth one, try again and again. Never, never give. Fellow Toastmasters, your potential is limitless. So keep trying again and again. I'm sure you can turn your dreams into reality. Over to Counter Chair. Kindly maintain silence for a minute. Now we come to the last contestant. Contestant number seven, Toastmaster Vinayak Gomaste. The title of his speech is That's Your Name. The title of his speech is What's in a name? Toastmaster Vinayak Gomaste, contestant number seven. Thank <laughs> you. 
driven by the passion for Juliet, disowned his family name <coughs> and instead rebaptized himself as Juliet's lover. <coughs> the rest is history. The power of love, the power of a name and its value has thus been long immortalized in prose and poetry. When I ask you to define yourself, this is the first step in branding yourself. You want to be unique, something different. If everyone knows what you know, then you are just an average person. Similarly, self-conscious people <coughs> are more concerned about how they carry in the society. Physical appearance and fashion is more important to them. This is the way they carry themselves in the society and that matters more for them. <coughs> in the same way, self-conscious people, <coughs> there is also an attitude problem also. They look down upon less branded goods. <laughs> Imagine, 10 years ago, we were content with homemade coffee. Today is the day of Starbucks brand. People who hold the cup of Starbucks feel like they are part of an elite society. What is true of humans is also true of goods and services. That's how the brand culture has emerged. <coughs> Brands have undergone evolution from analog to digital, <laughs> from large to small to nano, from physical to synthetic to virtual. Brand names click very fast. All you need to have, some advertising, lot of luck, and being in the right place at right time. <laughs> Steve Jobs became a household name when he introduced the iMac and iPod. Brand is equal to your reputation, your identity, and your trust. Brand products are prime in prices, if you have seen that. But remember, it's an illusion. The value of a brand is not going to stay intact forever. Isn't then this brand culture breed discrimination? It affects the price perception. Only house can afford it. Brand culture makes no sense in a country where the number of people dying of hunger increases rapidly. Tell me, does the name, does the deodorant name, no sweat, mean you positively and absolutely won't sweat? <laughs> Does the perfume name, passion, guarantees that? <laughs> Good names are merely suggestive. They do not give you contractual commitments. <laughs> Companies invest a lot of money in time, talent, and capital in an effort to lure the prospective customers. But how much value do companies really derive from cultivating a brand culture? To illustrate the point further, a very interesting study made by Professor Aswath Damodar, Professor of Finance at the Stern School of Business in US. He compared two companies making similar product, Coca-Cola and Cot makers of RC Cola. 
soda, he stayed. It's water with a bunch of sugar and a lot of crap thrown in. <laughs> you can do whatever you want on the outer surface of the can. But really there is no difference between a cola and another cola. You may say Coca-Cola tastes different. But then that is what 100 years of playing with your mind does to you. <laughs> Thus, in cola business, everything is about branding, not the product. To recall, Juliet, the lower bird, name is a big, it's a convenience. We ourselves make the name, discard the name. Why does it matter? Over to you. Please maintain silence for three minutes so that the judges can complete the ballots and the tally counter can collect you. I would like to call all the contestant here for a good photograph. All the contestant of international speech. Yeah. <laughs> 